Hello, my name is Drew Hastings, and today I want to talk about Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City. So, like I normally do, let's start with the theming first, because that's what you notice first. Um, so you walk up, and you see the ride sign. Um, and I remember the days when it used to be just Thunderation over there, and now Thunderation has kind of gotten pushed back, but you see the Time Traveler sign, and it really sets the mood. Um, Time Traveler is a very steampunky ride, and you'll see more of that as you go along in the queue, but um, the first thing you notice is that big sign with the clock. It is a working clock, in case you've wondered. Um, and then you walk, start walking down the stairs into the queue. Um, the first time I rode this, it was a in their opening year, and it was a three-plus hour wait. Um, and so the line was completely way backed up. I, th I believe it was onto the bridge. Um, and I, that's when we started waiting for, and it was ridiculously long. And once you start going down the stairs, um, that'll take you into the first floor of the building. Um, and when it first opened, you would walk in, and they had like a little camera station. Um, now I notice that they don't really have anyone manning it to take your picture because they can't get an on-ride photo because the cars are all spinning. Um, so that was their way of getting you a kind of on-ride photo where they would edit you in, you stood in front of a green screen. And then the rest of the first floor is basically just a whole bunch of switchbacks. There is not much to see in that first floor. Um, and when I first wrote it in its opening year, I had to wait in all of those switchbacks and it was absolutely awful. It was so awful. Um, and then you get to the second floor and there's some more theming. There's some l artwork along the walls and then the thing that everyone takes pictures of is the hanging clocks from the center. Um, those are pretty cool um, and I like the variety of clocks that they have. Um, and then there's some more artwork along the walls as you go along. Um, now one thing I will say about the first and second floor is that they have windows so you can see the ride outside which is super cool honestly um, and then that takes you up to the third floor and the third floor is the actual station itself and this is the most themed out of all the floors so far um, so you see the trains they have gears all over them um, and it's kind of a shame that Plops of Land stole their trains for Ride to Happiness, but at the same time the trains are already amazing. Why why recreate the wheel? So you see the trains covered in gears. Um, there are spinning gears on the ceiling that light up. Um, and one thing that is interesting about the restraints on this ride is that um, they do not actually check them, as in like pulling them up. The They have a system that checks them for you, so it'll come up with a green light if the restraints are checked and good to go. So that is one thing. You will notice the ride operators don't pull up on your restraints like on almost every other coaster in the world. And then once you are boarded on the ride, um, you start going out of the station. Um, and it's kind of intimidating, especially if you're going backwards because you, you know that the drop is coming because you drop 90 degrees out of the station. Um, but you can't see when it's actually coming, so you're just kind of anticipating. Um, and then when you start rolling out of the station, um, the, it's at that point that you start spinning. Um, and so you go down this first drop while spinning, um, and it's a pretty sharp pop of airtime. Um, it's not like drawn out, um, it's just a sharp pop of ejector airtime, especially in the back car. Um, and you're spinning while you're doing this, so you could be sideways, facing up at the sky, looking down, um, and then you continue through your layout, and what I'll say about the spinning is you don't really notice it like on most spinning coasters. Um, so this one, it's more like a change of direction, it's like you're turning and so you're feeling these elements in different ways, but it's not like you're spinning rapidly like you're in a tornado. So as you keep going through the ride, um, you then go into a dive loop, and that'll take you into the first launch, and this launch will actually stop you on the tracks and then accelerate you. Um, I don't know if it would be better as a rolling launch or if it's good as is. I don't really know. Um, and then you go into this kind of banked turn, um, 
and that will take you into the vertical loop. And this is my favorite inversion on the ride, just because if you take this sideways, you feel your weight shift from one side of your body to the other. Um, so it's super fun sideways because you really do feel your weight shift around, um, but it's just fun any way you take that. Um, and then that will take you into like an S-bend and you do a quick helix and that will take you into the zero G roll, which is the final inversion. Um, following that, you get a nice little pop of air time going into the second launch. And then you go into two kind of overbanked turns, I guess, for lack of a better term. Um, and that will take you into your brake run. So the layout is super fun. When I first rode this, I was anticipating something like Outlaw Run, where it's just sheer intensity. But this is a different type of intensity, and I have grown to appreciate it more, even though I didn't like it on my first ride, but that might have been partly in due to my very, very long wait time. The ride definitely has some slower moments where you are able to catch your breath, like when it stops you on that first launch, um, but that's kind of the beauty of it, and you get some hang time on some of those inversions, and it is just a different ride experience and the spinning makes everything just insane and sometimes when you take those elements um, you really will just be surprised with like the forces that you get because sometimes when you're facing a certain direction on a certain element you really get thrown out of your seat or whatever um, so the spinning does create different forces on your body which is fun it makes it super rewritable the launches on this ride are not very forceful, just keep that in mind. Um, I, it, you should not expect something like Powder Keg, where it's a super forceful, intense launch. These are a lot more gradual. Um, and I have ridden this when it was just me and my sister in the train. We rode in the very back row, but you're spinning, so it doesn't really stay the back. Um, but it is really interesting when there's only two people in the car on the same side because you do notice um, yourself spinning more, I think. It becomes more apparent. And you're also able to notice um, that your weight will shift you to be um, on the lower side, just like a scale. Um, so the weight will distribute itself, which is super interesting. So the spinning is definitely interesting on that. Um, and I have also gotten a ride on this when there was no sound effects going. Um, I believe there was a show going on in the Echo Hollow Amphitheater, and that was when we, me and my sister rode it by ourselves, um, and the ride operators were like, hey, do you want to go without any sound effects? And we were like, sure. Um, so it was pretty normal ride experience, except on the launch, it didn't warn you when it was going to launch, it just did it, which was super fun. Um, and then the spinning, I think, was more intense on that ride just because we were the only people on the ride. Um, so that was super fun. So then the big question with this ride, is it better than Outlaw Run? Is it the best ride in the park? And from my opinion, no. Um, I do feel like this ride grows on me every time that I ride it. Outlaw Run provides sheer intensity. This is, like I said, a different type of intensity. I still think that Outlaw Run is better just because of that sheer intensity, but this is definitely not one that you will want to miss. Um, it makes a great, great number two in the park, and it is debatable whether this is the best ride in the park. Um, in my opinion, it is not. Um, so I think that wraps up my review of Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City. Um, so let me know if you've written it, what your favorite element is. Um, do you think it's better than Outlaw Run, or... Do you think that Outlaw Run is better, or will Outlaw Run be better if you haven't ridden either one? Um, so just let me know, and thank you guys so much for watching. God bless. Go live an enthused life.